dermatologist, Dr. Leslie Bauman, and today we are here to talk about a new anti-aging product. We're going to tell you about the science first, but before we reveal what the new product is, we have all kinds of interesting things to tell you. I'm here with Sophie Bai, who created this interesting new product, and her background is so intriguing. Um, Sophie, I don't know if I've ever met someone who is an engineer, a cancer researcher with an MBA, who was also in a sorority, and you were a dance costume designer at, in the MIT dance troupe. Wow, what a combination. I'd love to hear about your background and how you have managed to do all those interesting things. Oh, thank you, Dr. Bauman, for having me. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here and to be on your podcast. Uh, I am a scientist. Uh, you know, growing up, I'm just obsessed with medicine, actually, because I, as a child, saw those tiny pills can save people's lives. I said, wow, what's more powerful than that? So that basically led me to be very obsessed with biology and chemistry. And I started to compete in math and science when I was seven years old. And I competed for seven years and uh, made it to the national science team of China and start to compete on behalf of China for math and science. And um, you know, started doing research and we learned all the college materials when we were 14 years old and uh, discovered an anti-aging compound when I was 14. Uh, okay. And then got it to MIT uh, and uh, had a minor planet named after me by NASA. So it was a fun fact about me that I have a little start over there. <laughs> So oh, that was wow, that's amazing. Very fast fast. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and what was the sign? What was the compound that you discovered? It's uh, in the family of uh, phenos. So it's basically an organic compound. At the time, we did a lot of high throughput screening to really, you know, focus on isolating one single compound rather than a gigantic mixture of things uh, to test on fruit flies. You know, it's a, a typical model for aging studies in the in the early days and it was able to double the lifespan of, of fruit fly. So that that was the research at the time I did. Well it's so unusual to find somebody who's good at science and good at math to get an MBA and creative enough to be a costume designer. So you really have your left brain and your right brain both working well. I think that's very, very interesting. I, well, I read in an interview that you said we have something in common. We both want science to be celebrated. And I love yeah. to follow the Nobel Prize winners on Instagram. And there were two women this year. Yay. Hello, um, it's Anna and Kathleen. <laughs> They're so amazing. They really are, and they're putting a lot of great YouTube content up, and I think it's great. Um, but I started this video series for the science lovers out there so that they can learn about products like yours without having to hear a bunch of marketing things. So tell us a little bit. I know everyone's wanting to know what product you did, but we're, I'm going to make them wait a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit more about your love for science and how that turned you into an entrepreneur, and now you have your own brand. Yeah, um, so... As I said, I started to be super interested in medicine because I just found that to be very powerful. I, I don't think anything's more powerful than saving somebody's life. Um, so that basically made me super into science. And, um, you know, my, both of my parents are engineers and my mom is a mechanical engineer. Uh, she designs engines for motorcycles. And my dad is an electrical engineer. But, you know, I chose a completely different field. I went into chemical engineering, uh, which I found gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of things I can do because you can create drugs and uh, you can have a lot of um, discovery that are more application based rather than theoretical, which you tend to find if you uh, were, you know, super into biology or physics or chemistry, those tend to be more and more theoretical. Um, you know, both of my parents thought I would become a professor. Like they thought I was, you know, on this path to be in academia. Um, but it was just, I love skin, everything related or about skin. Because I grew up with a terrible skin. I have cystic acne. I have eczema. I did the Bauman skin type. I'm skin type 7, which means I'm prone to everything. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> You know, like I, as a professional mathlete, right, so I competed for a living, 
right? I never paid a single dollar in tuition because I would win awards that in turn pays my tuition growing up. Um, and there was a competition that I participated when I was 11 years old. It was a public speaking contest. Uh, the judges said that I looked ugly because of my acne and eczema in front of an audience of almost a thousand people. And I was kicked out of the competition, so I wasn't even allowed to participate. That was the first time I felt like maybe it's not about working hard, because that had been my mantra for my entire life up to that point, being like, I'm not the smartest, I know that, but I work harder. I think I can achieve similar things compared to my peers, because I put more hours in. But it was that moment I was like, I didn't know how to fix my skin within a week for the next round of competition. Uh, and that really st stuck with me and made me feel like there was something wrong about myself I can't fix. Um, so that started me being super obsessed with skin and, and wanted to, you know, find things that work, right? It's rather than sounding good, you know, marketing things, but truly efficacious in a therapeutic level. So, you know, like I started doing aging research partly because of my skin. Uh, and then, you know, I, at MIT, I did cancer drug development. So I was working on prostate cancer, lung cancer, and type 1 diabetes. And I was fortunate to be exposed to the world where I see things happening that other people may see 20 years down the road. You know, at that time at MIT, Moderna was already born, but nobody knew about that. And it was eczema, I'm sure you know more than I do. Like, it's painful. Like, I couldn't sleep. And I could wake up and then become super puffed and couldn't open my eyes. Uh, those are more than just the cosmetic appearances. So that's when, you know, I decided after working in cancer drug development, I was like, wait a second, there's a field, there's a therapeutic area that's deeply impacting me on a daily basis. But there are not a lot of funding, uh, support, uh, or advancement in research going into that. So that's when I started to think, what if, you know, I make skincare and healthcare? What if I create this company that doing research, creating new molecules for eczema, for acne, for skin aging, for wrinkles, for all the things that everybody has concerns with, uh, but, you know, truly it's a pharmaceutical company rather than a brand. So that's when I started, uh, you know, in 2019. And fast forward, you know, we, we have support from Harvard, from MIT, and I have professors, you know, co-founders of Moderna supporting my company. They believe in my vision, that they believe it's much needed with all the scientific tools and discovery we already have in other therapeutic areas and to bring that to dermatology. So. That's basically when I took a, a, a leap of faith and uh, decided to put all my savings and to build my own lab in 2020. Well, I'm glad you did um, because we everybody has the same thing in common in that we're all aging. <laughs> we all need to prevent aging. Um, we have something else in common is I have eczema too. And that was one of the reasons I became a dermatologist because eczema can be so uncomfortable. Um, I still get a rash every time I go to a hotel room. So I have oh, me too. Um, I, yeah. I wear clothes that cover everything in the hotel. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally so, feel, yeah, I have the same. Like I still have it. So let's talk about preventing aging because that is on everybody's mind these days. And there's actually a new a buzzword called prejuvenation, kind of meaning rejuvenating your skin before it even starts to need it. Um, but basically, we're just trying to protect the important components of your skin um, so it doesn't thin or sag or, or get wrinkles or brown spots. And all those things make you look older. Bunches of st many studies have shown that people do judge you on your appearance as your your terrible experience and the math competition showed and it's it's not great that that happens but unfortunately in our society people do value looks a lot so preventing aging is something that everybody should try to do um, and you've invented a product that is an all-in-one product that's what's so amazing to me so it protects you from photo aging and um, there are many things a product needs to do to protect you from photo aging it needs to block sun 
It needs to neutralize free radicals, reduce inflammation, and decrease cellular senescence. So tell us what your approach was when you created this anti-wrinkle product that also protects you from the sun. Yeah, so, you know, you know, skin is our largest organ and it ages the fastest because it is exposed, right? So, uh, you know, we call this premature aging, right? There's nothing wrong with adding a number to your age. I'm definitely happier in my 30s than in my 20s. Like we celebrate the experiences and all the things you have done with your life, but we're here trying to prevent premature aging because our skin doesn't have to age the way that in the past people have experienced. Um, and then we started, you know, as industry outsiders, right? We're now beauty industry insiders. And, and we're just thinking as engineers, right? What is the problem we're trying to solve here? We're trying to solve premature skin aging and exactly to the four dimensions you just talked about. Those are some of the causes or some of the pathways that lead to skin aging, those unwanted pigment, unwanted wrinkles, sagginess, loss of collagen, all of those things. So then we went back to the lab to think about, okay, so we know the problems. So how do we create solutions or one solution for it? So that's when we decided, I guess, I mean, after so many trials and error to try to create a one molecule that can block UV, especially UVA rays, those are aging rays, and to scavenge ROS, right? ROS leads to inflammation, leads to, leads to cellular senescence and leads to uh, you know, erythema. Uh, so a lot of the things are actually because of ROS is overproduced that we experience all of the uh, responses from that. Uh, so that's when diamond core was born. It's a, it's a diamond augmented zinc oxide. So it wasn't just mixing diamond into it, but it was actually a very novel chemical synthetic process that we were able to use diamond as seed to grow zinc uh, molecules on top of diamond so we can actually change its shape, size, surface property, chemical physical properties to the way we like. Uh, that's the beauty about engineering is like, you know, think about Legos in a way, like how do we create the perfect, uh, I guess, key to the lock so that's that's what we did and then that led to uh you know the the dynam pavis dynamic age defense and uh, that is powered by our diamond core zinc oxide well it's interesting because you're a bauma skin type 7 which is an ospw and i'm a bauma skin type 4 which is dsnw so we really have very different skin types but the two things we have in common is inflammation and aging so what's interesting is your product happens to work for both of us. So uh, the big reveal is what is your product? You've alluded to it a little bit, but it's a sunscreen. So I didn't want to tell the viewers it was a sunscreen in the beginning because it's so much more than a sunscreen. It's a sunscreen that does a lot of things and it's a sunscreen that has diamonds in it. And as you told us, um, it uses zinc oxide. So what's so interesting is that it's vegan, it's zinc oxide, it's marine safe, it's not sticky, it's not heavy on your skin. I'm allergic to everything and I can use it without getting a rash. So it's really, in my opinion, the perfect sunscreen. And so I heard about it. One of my patients was in a kayak contest. Um, you were talking about age earlier. I'm in my 50s. And then I have a patient in her 70s who was in, was in a kayak contest in her 70s in Hawaii. And somebody gave her a sample of the Pavis sunscreen. And she brought it to me in my office and um, because she knows that I love skincare products. And I tried it and I couldn't believe how great it was. So that's, that's how we ended up reaching out to you. And I'm so excited um, about your sunscreen. Tell us all about um, research and development and your trials and everything you want to tell us about um, about what you uh, what you did with it. Now, I um, people may have seen some videos of me in the beginning saying Pavis because I thought the eye was long because there's a little line over the eye, but it's Pavis, right? Is that the way to say yes. it? Yes, yes, it's Pavis. The reason we make the eye look like a T is kind of like stop the sun. So it's kind of like a, a little umbrella oh, okay. so, or like a shield because Pavis actually uh, is a 14th century total body shield that soldiers use to protect themselves. 
And I think it's very fitting as a skincare brand is,、uh, you know, you want to stop all of the damages that are、uh, occurring because you know this organ skin is exposed.、Uh, so that's why we chose the the name Pavis. Well, tell us what the diamonds do for the product and and why they're so important and why it makes it so different from other physical and mineral sunscreens. If you think of what is the property of diamond. It's sparkling. Why is it sparkling? Because it reflects light. And what do we want to do in terms of, you know, sun protection? You know, to either absorb or reflect scattered light. So that's when the light bulb in my head was like, oh, can I make a diamond sunscreen? That's when I first started. But then, you know, diamond number one is extremely expensive. Number two, it's not soluble, so you will feel very sandy and grainy. So, both two reasons make it not ideal as a topical product.、Um, so that's when we went back to the drawing board to see how do we incorporate diamond, and to use the diamond properties to actually enhance a mineral filter. And we chose zinc for its very well studied、uh, safety profile. So that's why we decided let's change zinc with diamond. So that's when we,、uh, you know, started to experiment. How do we uh, chemically uh, make a new molecule、uh, by using both? And ROS, right, reactive oxygen species, is the root cause for so many of the aging processes. We talked about inflammation, talked about senescence, and how do we stop ROS? Right. So ROS typically is generated by your environment. Right, UV exposure does generate ROS. A lot of UV filters actually generate ROS. So think about you put a traditional sunscreen on, then ROS is generated because、uh, you know the the UV filters after being hit by the UV rays do generate a decent amount of ROS. So that's when we're like, okay, so how do we, from you know like an engineering minds mindset to get rid of all of the harmful. ROS particles, so that's when diamond came to place because it's actually a very strong anti,、uh, it's a very strong ROS scavenger, and we arrange it in a way it's a core shell structure. So we have diamond on the core, and you have zinc molecules that aligned very uniformly,、uh, perfectly to create a sphere shape, and that's where a, 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 a mechanism of action called re,、um, high efficiency electron shuttling. Comes to place where we're able to very efficiently shuttle the unpaired electrons, the ROS, so that to keep them at bay and so they don't come out and damage our skin. So you know the diamond really comes to twofold: is to help us create the perfect zinc, which give us the highest UV scatter and absorption. Number two really is help to scavenge and、uh, eradicate ROS. Great, great. So I'm going to go back a second for our viewers just to make sure they understand what we're talking about. ROS stands for reactive oxygen species. Some people call them free radicals, and what they are,、um, in a simplified form, is they're oxygen molecules that have an uneven number of electrons, and they want to have an even number. So what they do is they go and they steal electrons from important parts of your cells, like your cell membrane or proteins, and cause damage. That's why we don't like ROS. They they come in and they they age us and make us older. So what you're saying is that diamonds have a special way of giving this electron back to oxygen to calm it down and、um, and get rid of the ROS. Now I know you talked about already how diamonds help get rid of free radicals, but I didn't completely understand because that's pretty complicated science. Will you go back through what is it besides just giving the oxygen and electron? What is it about diamonds that's those that are so special, as far as getting rid of free radicals? Yeah, so you know, like you think about the structure of a diamond, how the, because you know, diamond in the end of the day is carbon, right? Like I call it like it's like a romanticized carbon. <laughs> so it's 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 a carbon molecule that are packed or lined in a very specific way that differentiate it from graphite. So, so the way the carbon atoms align actually create a lot of small holes in the diamond particles, and those holes can serve as home for the unpaired electrons. Oh, okay.
Okay. Yeah. So it actually is a shield. Now I understand why you call it Pavis. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a shield that just sucks up all the bad electrons. Yes. <laughs> And I, I noticed in some of your marketing materials that you have people with all different skin colors showing the, the products on their skin and it, it's sheer. So congratulations on finding a sunscreen that every skin color will use and that really works for all 16 Bauman skin types, which I hate saying that because I like to find a different product for different skin types. And so, you know, we are creating a solution that is smart enough to, you know, tailor, tailor the needs for, for different people. Right. Now, what gave you the idea to put, you have a lot of anti-redness ingredients in there and a lot of skin lightening ingredients to prevent melasma, like transamic acid. And I think you have licorice extract, which is for redness and for color. What, um, what gave you, I mean, it makes me think you're trying to treat melasma patients with this. Is that what you were thinking or how did you get the idea to put those in there? Yeah, so, you know, any sunscreen product, you can never protect 100%, right? So there's always a very small dose of UV that is going to damage your skin. So what do what what should we do about this, let's say, 1% or 2% 2 of UV rays that do harm your skin? It is scientifically possible because it's still not 100%, right? Like it's it's basically a curve that plateaus in the end that could, you know, lead to SPF 1000. But again, no sunscreen, no filter will ever give you 100% protection. Uh, so that's when we were like, okay, so what do we do? What can we do with this 1% or 2% UV ray damage? And that's when we went back to the lab to... Uh, you know, use a drug development process called high throughput screening. So we started with a library, compound library, about 100,000 compound. And we try to screen to see, okay, what works synergistically with UV filters, with photo protection, right? So how some ingredients would help with erythema, some will help with uh, pigment, some will help with, you know, um, oxidation. So that's when we in the end, landed to the six ingredients that are in our cocktail in the Pavis different, uh, dynamic defense, uh, age defense, which are niacinamide, tranexamic acid, licorice, uh, astaxanthin, pycnogenol, uh, acylamarine. So that's how we, how we landed uh, in terms of actually seeing a result of putting those ingredients in and together to work actually synergistically with UV filters that can give you uh, kind of like a simultaneous repair uh, process that's happening while, you know, like your, 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 your diamond core zinc is helping you to prevent the damage. Well, it works out that it's really good for rosacea patients because it doesn't sting. A lot of chemical sunscreens will bother my rosacea patients. And then since you don't have any irritating ingredients in there, and I also use it a lot in my melasma patients because it helps block sun and get rid of inflammation and also help with the, the pigment. So thank you for making it easier with those patients for me because that is hard. Oh, thank you. I mean, I think it's, I should have done your, you know, like a skin type survey earlier. So I knew I was a seven because, you know, like if I were a seven, I, I knew then because I know I have a lot of problems, then it's very natural for me to put ingredients like cinnamon and and, uh, and nice and amount to help with uh, sebum production, right? So that's good for acne. And then to have uh, tranexamic acid, licorice, and nice and amount, that is for the pigment. Well, you know, it just shows there's a silver lining to everything. So your acne that you had as a child led you to make this great sunscreen because it, you know, it doesn't feel greasy on the skin. It doesn't clog the pores. It doesn't cause acne. And then it treats all the problems that you had. So if you hadn't had those problems, you wouldn't have made this great sunscreen. I only use mineral filters myself because I don't want all those chemicals getting in my system and they show it, they, they can show that they get in your urine. So we know that they're, they're um, absorbed in your skin, especially with kids. Do you, um, is your sunscreen safe to use in toddlers and kids? It should be because it's all mineral. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think when I started this company by Bio Biosciences, we weren't working on UV filters. We were actually working on a, transdermal drug delivery system. Think about needless Botox, 
So we're thinking about how to get into the skin without needles. And that's what we were doing for the longest time. And then FDA in December 2019 said, chemical UV filters are not safe because of skin absorption issues. And the skin absorption is, you know, they did human studies, which is very difficult, very expensive to do and applaud FDA for doing that. Uh, they did human study to show that after one application of pretty much every chemical sunscreen on the market in the United States, they detect those chemical filters at a very high concentration. That's where uh, FDA's concern come in being like, okay, after one single application, we detect chemical UV filters that are so much higher than the concentration we want it to be for any drug out there. Uh, and some UV filters are even 300 times higher than the FDA allowed amount. And that's when I was like, okay, so seems like FDA only regard uh, uh, mineral UV filters are safe, but they have this very bad white cast issue. So how, how, how can we create something that's safe, that is according to the FDA standards, safe, right, uh, and, 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 and to work well. So that's where we actually you know, started to, to research on, on UV filters. But to your question, it is kid safe because we did skin absor absorption study of our own UV filter because, you know, we, we don't buy ingredients from others. We manufacture our own UV filter. So we are the only one in this world to have this material. And we tested um, skin absorption, human skin absorption. There's no skin absorption of our UV filter after 24 hours. So that's why it is safe because you eliminate the risk of things getting into your body, in your blood, in your urine, in your breast milk that if accumulate over time can potentially cause harm. Well, you alluded to a couple of controversies in the sunscreen world, and I can I can just feel some dermatologists cringing out there saying, no, you're going to scare people away from using sunscreen. So I'm going to explain to our viewers what the controversy is. We know chemical sunscreens get in your body and can be bad, just like we talked about. But the problem is we know the sun is terrible and that it causes melanoma and aging. And people don't want to use mineral sunscreens because they're thick and yucky and they look white on your skin. So as dermatologists, we don't want people to be afraid of sunscreens because then they won't use them. So the, if, you, if you can find a mineral sunscreen that you don't mind using, that is always the best. So that's what's nice is that people are not going to mind using yours because it doesn't, you don't feel it on your skin and it doesn't cause any problems. If more sunscreens were comfortable to use, then melanoma rates would go down. In Australia, they've done a great job with sunscreens and their melanoma rates have come down. So we know that there's a direct link between skin cancer and sunscreen use. So I hope that more and more people uh, will use the sunscreen. That would, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, like I think for people who wants a short answer is a sunscreen is good as long as you wear it every day. But also sunscreen is only one way to practice safe sun, right? There's always clothing, sunglasses, hat, seeking shape. There, there are multiple ways for you to protect yourself other than just, you know, sunscreen's only thing, right? So I, I think knowing that and also just like be more conscious about sun avoidance, not sun absence because that's impossible, but you know, like always think about you know, we call it practice safe sun to, uh, to, to, to remind people sun is, sun is harmful and it's uh, all year round, every day. It's not just on your beach days or in the summer. And, you know, if we are able to get the awareness out to help more people to, 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 to be more cognizant about, you know, daily practice of, of photo protection, in addition to sunscreen or other things, then, you know, that's where I think we we, we win by actually helping eventually decrease the rate of, of skin cancer in this country because it is very high. And that's why I didn't want to talk in the beginning about this being a sunscreen because in my opinion, this is the best anti-wrinkle product on the market because people will use it and it blocks sun. So if, if you're out there, tell yourself this is an anti-wrinkle product and make yourself use it every day because if you use it every day, there was a study a long time ago. I couldn't find it. Um, I don't know why I can't find it anymore. But we used to quote it all the time in dermatology. 
that they looked at people in Philadelphia and um, measured how much sun they got. And if they would wear an SPF of five every day, by the time they were 70 years old, they had 50% less sun damage. That's a five every day. Imagine if you were wearing a 30 every day. By the time you're 70, you would have so much. So basically, you've created a vegan, marine safe, soothing, anti-wrinkle product that prevents hyperpigmentation and blocks rays that isn't sticky, isn't white, and people will use no matter what their skin color is, their gender, or their skin type. So congratulations. I wouldn't have thought anyone could do it, um, but you did it, and I think that that's great. Oh, thank you. I mean, as we work on new UV filters, you know, that will require more capital and, and resources because, you know, we, we do have molecules in the lab that can achieve SPF 1000. This is not going to be, oh, like everyday consumer needs SPF 1000, but really is for people with high risk of skin cancer, or family history of skin cancer, who are in occupations that are under sun exposures all the time. Right? Think about farmers, think about astronauts. Right, so those people, I think that is what's needed. It's, it's definitely way higher UVB or maybe some UVC protection that are needed for those those mm -hmm. occupations. But um, you know, for 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 us, is uh, we want to push the boundaries of what's what's possible, and and eventually that's what scientists and engineers uh, do. So uh, yeah, so you know, thinking about the future is bright, uh, and there are a lot of exciting things coming, and, and a lot of exciting exciting things happening in our lab. Well, we look forward to seeing, I know you have a lot of patents. I can't wait to see what you come up with next. And thank you so much, Sophie Bai, for um, a Pavis Skin Science for coming and talking to us today. And I look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Bauman. It was truly a pleasure.